key piece of advice for people selling construction technologies? Then find the gap first. If you have a system or want to develop a system or you have something, you need to find what are you trying to fix. Mm -hmm. That's probably crucial. In 20 years, what do you think construction will look like after having this impact of AI and large language models? So probably the biggest thing for me as coming from the construction management background is to make based on the data and suggestions and the consequences of those suggestions. Do you think that technology needs to be, like, should be simple? Say, so let's keep it and the, the, the focus is actually on the people. And then if we implement the technology, the say we've got projects, the AI, automations, everything else, is it actually productivity increasing? How do you predict AI will affect the construction workforce? I would say it's the... It will disappear. It will be done by AI. Canary Wolf Group, a multi-billion pound developer based in London and strong advocates for digital construction. How do they assess and buy technology? What advice do they have for startups building products? And how do they see the future of construction? You're listening to Bricks and Bytes. And on this episode, we welcome Roman Barron, Senior Manager of Digital Construction at Canary Wolf Group. In this episode, we learn about the Canary Wolf Group's technology selection process the importance of finding solutions that address real business needs, advice for startups selling to large contractors, and Roman's thoughts on the future of construction. If you're enjoying our podcast, you can support us by heading over to www.bricksbytes.show and signing up to our newsletter. This is an easy and free way which helps us keep this podcast going. In addition, you receive all of the key insights from the guests we have on, as well as some bonus content about what's going on in the wider world of construction tech. And now, an announcement from our sponsor, Shift. Worried you'll lag behind because construction's going digital and you struggle with all things tech? You'll need the right BIM partner to help. That's why this episode is brought to you by Shift, BIM specialists for contractors who want to thrive and stay competitive in construction's digital future. Visit makethesht.digital for more information. Roman, thank you for coming. Um, so let's dive in. Maybe let's start from the Canary Wharf Group, a multi-billion pound company which owns the area of Canary Wharf in London. Uh, so can you give us a brief overview of uh, Canary Wharf Group? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me here. Uh, You're welcome. I've been watching some of your uh, podcasts before and you have some great, great and interesting guests. I work for Canary Wharf Group. Um, it's actually Canary Wharf Contractors, which is part of Canary mm. Wharf Group. Mm -hmm. Um, my title is senior manager. It's mm -hmm. actually changed from the project manager. I mm -hmm. got promoted end of last year. Congratulations. I, I, thank you. Oh. I, kept, I kept that quiet. You kept quiet, yeah. Um, I'm um, also doing... But it's still digital construction? Absolutely. Yeah. Digital construction, senior manager. Mm -hmm. I'm also doing part-time PhD mm -hmm. at London South Bank University mm -hmm. in AI and automation in mm -hmm. construction. AI and automation in construction. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um I have 20 years of experience in construction. Mm -hmm. uh, I've started as general operative and then I worked my way up as mm -hmm. a carpenter, uh, site foreman, site manager to project manager. And mm -hmm. now I'm doing digital construction. Um, and I would like to call myself um, a construction manager with trade background. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. <laughs> that gives you the overall uh, view on the construction from the bottom up to where you are now. Absolutely. And I think I've got advantage when it comes to systems because I've been there. Mm -hmm. um, I know what people are, uh, are experiencing, what they have experience as well with the systems, with uh, what they do day to day. I completely understand the pain points. Mm -hmm. That's why when it comes to um, implementation or looking for a system straight away, I know if, if it's going to work or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I do on a daily basis. You know, I research systems. If there's something good, then we put it to the wider audience. We look at it, um, what we can get out of it, business value. Uh, we don't, I don't only decide what I think should be implemented. We talk to other people, mm -hmm. um, higher management and people on the ground as well, mm -hmm. uh, construction teams. And then we all together, internal, external 
the stakeholders we decide okay is that good or not mm -hmm. when did you like start uh, getting uh, interested in digital technology or maybe then it probably led to to your um, to your PhD like what was the like um, turning point um, it was uh, probably eight nine years ago when I worked as construction manager for Carillion. Mm -hmm. They were still there at mm -hmm. the time. And I had my usual role as construction manager or block manager, they actually call it. And I was running a system at mm -hmm. that time, similar to a system to collect the data from the projects and all that. And mm -hmm. that was my sort of first. Um, so you were trying to make them more intelligent. Yeah. Yeah, and co the data. correct. And that was my pr probably first contact of it. Mm -hmm. And also I did masters in BIM, building inf information modeling. Mm -hmm. Through my working life, I have been always studying part time. That's why doing PhD uh, now, it's not a big thing for me because mm -hmm. I always done it from from colleges, from you know, HNC, HND, bachelor degree, master's degree. And now I'm doing PhD, always, PhD, learning. always working full time and doing something part time. Um, mm. yeah. What's biggest learning? Like, what's the most more important learning? Um, the school learning, university learning, or the or on the job, or both? I would say they complement each other. Mm. <clears throat> Obviously, job is the fundamental. That's mm. the foundation of what you do, how you do things, and all that. But the um, university or college gives you like extra edge on top of it. Mm -hmm. That means you think about stuff you probably wouldn't have thought about doing on the tools or on the project. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's something else because as you work on a project, you can be, you can be very subjective yeah. as we all are. We mm -hmm. all have our own opinions. You know, we all come from the backgrounds and, and you can then miss out and the education gives you that sort of extra overview. And when you talk to other people from the university, you say, oh, I didn't think about that. Oh, they're yeah, doing exactly. that differently. Mm -hmm. Then you widen your horizon. Mm -hmm. You look at other things differently. Exactly, you got a space to think rather than just... And you can then apply that later for yourself on, on the next thing. Oh, I've seen that. Oh, that will work perfectly on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so should we move to Canary Wharf Group? Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Canary Wharf. I would say... How long have you been with them? Seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my seventh year now. Um, see, if you look at Canary Wharf, it's constantly changing. If you uh, look at the context of Canary Wharf, there's Canary Wharf... 1.0, mm. which started 36 years ago, mm. late 80s. That's where Canary Wharf was, when we started building Canary Wharf, basically mm -hmm. the offices, the great buildings, the architecture, the infrastructure. Is this peninsula artificial or is it like a natural, like a ground that was? Some of them was re reclaimed f from the water, some of them was there already. Okay. And then that's the 36 years ago we started building Canary Wharf and obviously that time was built the greatest one, Canada Square. Mm -hmm. That was 36 years ago. Now, um, then after that, it came uh, Canary Wharf 2.0. Mm -hmm. uh, 2015, nine years ago, we've started building our residential portfolio, Woodworth and um, Newfoundland, mm -hmm. which I will go to a little bit later mm -hmm. to give you some figures on for what's happening there. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, most recently in 2020, uh, we have started Canary with 3.0 and there are three elements to it. Um, it's nature, we're greening the estate, we're in a partnership with um, Eden Project. Mm -hmm. um, there is um, new amenities, uh, we have electric go-karting, mm -hmm. Um, we have open uh, water swimming. Mm. We've got um, a go boat, like electric boats. You can go around Canary Wharf. To make it nicer for the people who live there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Who visit, live. Mm -hmm. um, and the last part of it, the new industries. Mm -hmm. um, we are bringing new industries. For example, we are building, we are developing new health and sci science center in Canary Wharf, in part of Canary Wharf called uh, North Key. Mm -hmm. That sort of history of Canary Wharf, um, you know, the three sort of um, um, elements of it, and how, and you can see how Canary Wharf has developed, mm -hmm. transformed over over time. Mm -hmm. um, I've asked you early. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> 
how many people actually visited Canary Wharf. Yeah. So my guess, my first guess was, what did I say? Two million, two million people oh. in, in a year, last year. Yeah. It was over 67 million people That's visited Canary Wharf footfall, footfall in 2023. That's insane. And that's 25% increase on the previous year. Mm. Why do people go there? <laughs> exactly. Good question, uh, which I'm going to go to in a minute. Mm -hmm. You can see Canary Wharf is the place to be, mm. place to visit. There's so much to it than you think. Um, a supply of the apartments or buildings cannot like increase exponentially, well, uh, proportionally to people coming in there, right? Because there's a restrict, uh, land is restricted really, right? Yes, but we still have a land which we're building on it, mm -hmm. for example. We have currently over 3,500 people living on the estate. Mm -hmm. um, it's over 2,200 residential units, BTS and BTR, built mm -hmm. to sell and built to rent. Um, and this will double in the new future, in the next few years, because we are we have under construction Woodworth Phase Two and Phase Three. Okay. That means you can see there's more to come. That means there'll be more people living and um, um, working as well, uh, and there'll be more people visiting Canary Wharf. So you're saying 300,000 apartments, right? Right now, uh, something like that. 2,200 over. Oh, two, 2,000 over 2,200, okay. and this will double. Oh wow! Because that's the existing. That means there's more than that to come. So it would be more dense, or where where would you put them? These apartments. Uh, we are already building them. You're already building them. You know, oh, okay. You know so when you came handover. when you came to see us to Canary Wharf? Yeah, it, yeah. I took you around that Woodworth Estate. Is yeah, there's so already the there's already under construction, mm -hmm. and also, um, why do you think people will come to Canary Wharf? Um, the estate is 128 acres, mm -hmm. entire estate. Uh, Woodworth is 23 mm -hmm. acres, and also the North Key is eight acres. Mm -hmm. There's 16 acres of open space, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, sidewalks um, uh, by the river, by uh, uh, gardens and parks and all that. Um, we have five shopping malls in Canary Wharf. There is over 300 retail units, retail tenants. That means over 300 shops. Mm -hmm. And there's over 70 cafes, restaurants and bars. Seems that like a good place to live. It is, and it's not only live, but also I go there someplace on Saturday mm -hmm. because it's nice. It's always clean. It's safe. It's it's um, good service. It's good place. It reminds me a little bit of of uh, some areas in Dubai. Just the weather doesn't match because <laughs> <laughs> it's all nice, very nice apartments and all nice construction, very new construction. Um, yeah, it is. Yes, uh, going back a little bit to construction. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of construction, which we do at the moment, how much do you think, question for you now, Go for it. I'm interviewing you, <laughs> how much do you think we actually build in terms of value at, at the moment, Okay, so at the development? Okay, so you said 2,000 apartments. In but that was built already, that's done. Okay, that's built already. So I guess it's less than 2,000 apartments, right? Well, at 40 the million pounds. Okay. <laughs> Again, Martin, out of scale. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Currently in Canary Wharf, mm -hmm. on um, under development, we have over two billion pounds mm -hmm. under development. That's uh, including Woodworth mm -hmm. and North Key, mm -hmm. where we do the health. We should and have had an initial chat about that. Yeah. We look silly. <laughs> <laughs> and and seventy five percent of that it's residential. Mm -hmm. That means um, built to rent, built to sell. Mm -hmm. Um, How much of this are you keeping for for yourself? As in, sorry, for uh, as a Canary Wharf group, um, these apartments and buildings. Um, old um, built to rent mm -hmm. stays with us. We've got a separate company okay. called Virtus, mm -hmm. and they manage basically. We build Canary Wharf contractors hand over to Virtus, and they, which is Canary Wharf Group, mm -hmm. uh, rent them, and we keep them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most of it, it's a majority of it, I would say, it's um, built to rent. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, that's a little bit about Canary Wharf. Um, I know I gave you a few facts, you know, now you've got the scale of how big it is, what's there, how many shops, what's the construction value, what's, you know, no, what, what actually we doing. So the quick tricky question, or maybe not tricky, what will happen when you build all of it and there's no more space to develop? 
you know what? There's always space. <laughs> Construction cannot stop. Have, nice. have you seen construction stopping in London Not or really. somewhere? No. You can buy airspace or rebuild. There is always uh -huh. there is always something else. If mm. you know what I mean, um, there's yes. We still have the North Key, uh, which I mentioned. Um, we uh, under development, we've got the one building. There's mm -hmm. eight acres of space. That means there's more to come. Mm -hmm. And also, we've got some spots around Canary Wharf uh, where there could be uh, single buildings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should we move to uh, technology? Or, yes, yeah, yes okay. absolutely, yes. Um, yes, I'm, um, I'm looking after digital construction for Canary Wharf mm -hmm. contractors, actually. What does it mean? You know, sounds fancy. Mm -hmm. um, what we trying to do, or not try, what we are doing, mm -hmm. and partially, it's not only me, but we've got a team of people. Um, we're trying to transform uh, the existing processes or existing way of we design and develop a design and build our buildings mm -hmm. to improve productivity, quality of the buildings, safety, sustainability, efficiency. Mm -hmm. That's the main goal. Are you looking at tangible like um, activities or intangible uh, act activities like software or hardware? Really, that's, that's my question. If from my perspective, uh, mainly is the software. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned before, we don't just go and purchase and that's it. We so actually talk to the stakeholders, internal, mainly internal, our team, mm -hmm. what do they think, and then external as well, because obviously um, we deal with, with them as well. So the good, probably good question to ask at this point is, what is your process of selecting this tech uh, on the projects? How do you purchase particular technology? Good question, very good question. Um, we go through selection process, mm -hmm. and we actually have done it recently. Um, I can give shout to Revisto, Okay. They came first. Guys, well done. Uh, we went through an um, extensive selection process. Mm -hmm. um, that was a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. um, we had ex already existing system and there was a need for uh, to change um, to because the existing system didn't suit uh, many. So maybe w what does Revisto do and how were you doing things before Revisto and how are you going to change it? Revisto is the design coordination software mm -hmm. where you put the models you federate them into one and then you see you see the clashes you see comments and so on and obviously there are the functions mm -hmm. but in a nutshell that's what it is we had already existing system in place um, and uh, we what we decide to not just jump into another one we decided to actually um, go and look what's there in market we um, created like a beam working group after talking to high high management, high management, we created a beam working group. Mm -hmm. A few people from different departments, uh, because obviously they're different needs from different departments. And we went to the market. We uh, had seven different systems, mm -hmm. similar systems. We had the um, presentations, the demos of them. Then out of that, uh, we have s created functionality matrix. Mm -hmm. That's a fancy word, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Basically. Uh, fancy spreadsheets with functions versus systems. Mm -hmm. What about the costs? Because there's functions and not all of them have... Well, that will come a little bit later. Okay. Okay. So the cost is not a primary driver? Uh, no. It no. needs to basically... You can have the cheapest one, but you, if, we'll, if it won't do anything for you, what's the point of having it? Uh, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then from the functionality matrix, we have selected top three. Mm -hmm. And one of them was Revista. And what's the best way of checking the system? To test it. We went and we actually tested it on the live, our, on our three different live projects, mm -hmm. and we had some of the team members worked on those um, two or three different projects. They were able to check two or three different systems, mm -hmm. and their feedback was valuable. After that, after a month, a couple of months, we had uh, uh, two front runners, and um, and after a few months, we have appointed Revisto. Mm -hmm. as, as the best product at that time in the market for us. Mm -hmm. um, and also, obviously, the system is evolving. We now uh, look into uh, taking the uh, model on the app or on the phone uh, as they have the apps now to the side as well. That means not only design team can use it and people in the office, but also people on site remotely. Mm -hmm. So how is this tech um, 
Maybe a little bit on pricing on tech or broadly when you look into it. And also, does this trial come as a free trials or they you need to like pay, pay for this? Um, what's, your, what's your view on the pricing? Because w- what, what we've noticed um, that there's, there's some soft, there are various types of software in construction that uh, they charge you per uh, value of the project. Yeah, so it's uh, two billion pounds, and we take one percent. <laughs> Beautiful business model. So, uh, like, what what are your thoughts on on the uh, the charging um, models yeah. of the software? It's um, for the testing. It was um, depends on the system. Mm-hmm. Some of them we had to pay. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of them we had to pay for the system and for the consultants to help us to run the system. Sure. That means you double bubble. You pay double. Yeah. But we had to do it, and then um, also some of them were for free. Mm-hmm. Okay, it all depends. But in terms of the pricing, you're absolutely right. My experience uh, and uh, is if you have a project where you have sort of limited number of users, mm-hmm. it's better to have user based license. Mm-hmm. Then you pay per license per person, and then you can take away from them and give them when they need them, or people leave you give the new people when the old people leave yeah. when it becomes a bit more system becomes more usable mm-hmm. and there's more people using it and you have on multiple project mm-hmm. then it's probably to have like enterprise agreement mm-hmm. or project base where you have a flat fee mm-hmm. you pay monthly and you have unlimited users or unlimited projects mm-hmm. The business model, we have both with our systems because I'm looking after directly after three systems and depends actually, and I've got both mm-hmm. user base, enterprise ag- agreement, and also project base. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's. I think it depends of how many people are using it. Mm-hmm. If you're going to use on all the projects or just on few, mm-hmm. um, and obviously you have to see um, What's the value? Yeah, exactly. That's what I was coming at. So how do you measure ROI then, or, or, or you don't measure ROI? Well, what's we're the, trying to. Yeah, what's the yes, parameters? It's, it's, um, it's very tricky to measure something in mm-hmm. if you improve, let's say, coordination, productivity. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you, for example, if we have, um, um, I'll give another shout out to the spares. Mm-hmm. We've got the spares. And we use this purse and that improves our um, the way we run the project and our project management and uh, obviously how do you put the value next to something when you prevent the things from happening yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay we I because we had that and then mm. we do, and project went very smoothly but then lots of things didn't happen because we had that and mm-hmm. you probably don't know about half of them and then if something didn't happen, we, we, and we know about a few things and how do you put the you know, pound next to it? Mm-hmm. It's almost, you can probably guess. Yeah. Uh, and then thinner. some of the stuff you can put a uh, price next to it. It's for example, if the system can give you um, saving in time. Mm-hmm. If for example, I was doing something weekly, it took me six hours. Now I'm just because of the system, it's one hour. That means I save That's those very five easy hours. To evaluate. That's very easy. Yeah. But this is very basic and it's probably low value in mm. terms of if you have big things you prevent from yeah. happening. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that it could be millions of pounds. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. So on the uh, sale process uh, also. So what from sales point process point of view, what mistakes people make when approach you as a a potential customer uh, as a Canary Wharf group, right? Uh, so what do they don't understand about needs of a general contractor? Um, I mean, in construction tech, obviously. They need to have knowledge about construction, not just trying to sell the system, mm-hmm. because there's lots of salespeople just selling it. They don't know exactly we what to do. Them. What the, it's, yeah. it's, and promising too many things it's probably not a very good thing if, mm-hmm. if, if because if i've got them on someone oh does this 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 and ask and I, my question is can you do this 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 oh yeah we can do anything <laughs> yeah right if you can do anything that means you can't do anything mm-hmm. um i think pro- over promising hey guys just a quick announcement throughout april we're giving away a free sponsorship this is a way for you to get in front of a highly niche and targeted audience it will include podcast ads social media ads and newsletter ads Visit our website, www.bricksbytes.show. That's www.bricksbytes.show and hit the red button in the header to enter. Good luck. It needs to work. Obviously, that's the baseline. Mm -hmm. And 
there needs to be value in the business for it. There needs to be business value mm-hmm. when it comes to it. What do I get out of it if I if if I implement? Mm-hmm. What 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 do the team get out of it? Okay. Brilliant. I'm not sure if I ask about this actually, but so at what point you decide that the process, certain process within the within the group, uh, needs to be uh, disrupted? At what point you think actually, if we had this digitized or more automated, that would be brilliant. Let's look for it. Good question, because that could be sort of a pivot point where you start something great or you miss the boat. Mm. We have, I think, we're quite lucky. Um, because we have a positive approach from a high management towards technology, mm-hmm. um, from my um, directors to our Kenerworth contractors managing a director. He's aware of technologies, he's pro, and he's um, actually coming to me and asking me about some stuff. And the best things we ever had, I would say, it actually coming from the people, and I get lots of requests. Not all of them obviously being... Um, fulfilled because some of them, uh, you know, there's no value, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of requests actually from the people, from Canerworth employees saying, oh, mm-hmm. what if you could this, what if you could that, and if there is a problem, could we automate, could we digitize this, mm-hmm. could we, and then on top of that, we not only implement the system and put and create a form, or um, we also change our procedures. We cr- either create new procedures, mm-hmm. um, internal procedures or we change existing one to reflect that the system should be used and uh, how it should be used and so on. And that's sort of the pivotal point when um, the idea comes either from the people mm-hmm. or quite often when I do loads of research, loads of um, um, system demos, I think, oh, that one is stuck in my head. Maybe we should explore that further. Mm-hmm. If we can use this for this and that, then I put it forward and then being assessed. Mm-hmm. Brilliant, okay. So as a developer, so we have a questions from the pool that we did, from the poll we did on LinkedIn, and Prakash is asking, it's a question from Prakash. Uh, as a developer, how do you decide which tools you purchase and allow the supply chain to as- access, and which do you leave to the supply chain to bring? In either case, as a developer, you end up paying for them either directly or via prelims. So the decision must must not be based on it must be based on something different something different than the cost. It is it is based on something different. Um, most of the supply chain, you need to remember, they are already tax savvy, tax savvy. They already have their systems in place. For example, let's give um, the example of trade contractors. They already have their own, let's say, QA systems in place. They've mm-hmm. got the handovers, everything else. That means um, they're already doing something and it could be really hard to say oh you stop doing that completely and let's 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 use mine Mm -hmm. and what we have we've got combination of things Mm -hmm. um for example with revisto Mm -hmm. um we actually ask uh, the design team to start to using it Mm -hmm. and most of them have licenses already then if they don't we give them the license that's what's happening at the moment um and then on a trade contractor level, um, we have our internal systems, which we ask them to do, mm-hmm. to complete or, or, or to get engaged, but also they have had their own systems mm-hmm. to run their own business, because as you can imagine, they- They, they, they must be efficient, right? Exactly, they, yeah. they have to have their own system. If they don't, then then they should have. <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 sure. Okay, so is there, I'm just curious, uh, is there a conversation sometimes from the with the contractors about, like consulting with them on the technology that should be uh, adopted or or rather not? Um, With trade contractors or the consultants, um, Mm -hmm. we, we, I would say, we do engage with them and we say, what do you think? Uh, For example, when we were reviewing um, the Revisto, Mm -hmm. we actually went to consultants and we asked them, what systems do you use? Yeah. And what's your feedback on it? Mm-hmm. And they came. Oh, they came with a list. We have this, this, this. We we had this for years. We had that before, but it wasn't good because of that. Mm. That's a very good feedback source, right? It's yeah. 
probably the best. That's why we end up up with shopping list of seven instead of having two or three. Yeah, because yeah. consultants, they are, you know, the professionals, they work in it all the time mm. and they know the industry very well. Mm -hmm. Does it happen in your like day to day work that you like end up getting emails from um, various technology providers and like, how many a day have you got? Oh, <laughs> I stopped counting. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Loads. Loads. I do read them. Mm -hmm. I do. Uh, there's a lot of systems which already I'm aware of us have been mm. doing this for a few years yeah. I, I've seen so many yes uh, I had before I need to actually keep up to date I had a, like Excel spreadsheet with matrix of mm -hmm. uh, um, what system what does it do when I saw them and saw that but that's another thing I have to keep on top of it mm -hmm. I might need to update that but um, I've seen I would say not all of them but probably most of the systems which mm. are in London but not only in London I got a lot of international companies as well mm -hmm. Um, I check what they do. If I think there is value, I do book um, demo, mm -hmm. or I just ask them if they can send me some more information. I also do my own research online. But there is a lot. Yes, as you can imagine, um, they probably they send lots of emails. Folks, seems like uh, cold outreach works on Roman, so please keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm always open if there is a good solution. Mm -hmm. I never say no. If I do receive, I said, I read the emails, I go through them and also um, I sometimes get email and then um, in the next couple of days, a lot of people forward me the same email because they got it as well. That means a lot of people from Canary Wharf receive the same email, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is fine, which is absolutely fine. Um, but what's good about it, people forward me those emails. Yes, because you know, they know you're, you're the man. Yes, yeah. and they know I look into it and, and, and they actually think there might be something in it. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Okay, so a um, few weeks ago, we had a conversation with uh, one of the construction uh, tech venture capitalists and who said that from their point of view, as they invest in technology, uh, ideal investable idea, as in business, is the one that has a position within the budget of the project in the within the PNL, which is an interesting point of view. So do you assess technology in the similar way that if there is a, for example, if the plus, uh, plaster board, if the, is, if the re uh, not retaining wall, if a stud wall is being built and there is a plaster boarding on each side and there is a solution that allows for um, holes to be done, right? There is no a p &L, um, with a, there is no position within a PNL that oh, someone makes these holes. There is only stud wall as a position within the budget, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you how do you see this? Well, as I mentioned before, on the, the, the on it's it's a tricky one to actually mm -hmm. to 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 explore. Uh, and we the way I look at it, it's is that's the uh, what's the return on investment. The way we when we assess the system, and as I mentioned before, it's the it's hard to actually put a, something Found next value to it. Into it. Yeah. It's it's very it's very tricky, but it can be if you um, if you um, have the case scenarios, if you have actually real life examples of mm -hmm. things. Then, if you let's say ten or twelve or twenty of them, and because of this we did this 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 this, and then there are like crucial things. Then I think there is a real value. Then people, even though there is no price next to it, there's no pound to it. Mm -hmm. It's actually they can see okay that's a big thing. Out of those twenty, I can see three or four groundbreaking, or three or four are you know uh, critical, mm -hmm. and I think that could turn the project negative or you know um, turn it over basically. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, good. So out of all of these emails that you get about new technology and people trying to sell, what is exciting that is coming to the market in your view? Or what te what exciting technologies are kind of likely to change some sort of landscape within construction? Um, I can be subjective, obviously, mm -hmm. um, but I would say there is probably um, more on project delivery, mm. and I would like to see more on project delivery as well. Mm -hmm. Where, for example, so like tangible tech, like a uh, soft uh, hardware, sorry. Software. 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 Okay. Um, I think there was maybe one of the questions we had on a, on a, on a LinkedIn as well. Um, when I 
look at the system, what, what would I like to see in the next 10, 20 years as a project manager? Yeah, so that was that was not a LinkedIn. Uh, that was uh, something we had. But there is a question also from Matthew Evers. Where do you see AI, data analytics and beam reality capture going in regards to change management and pre predictive analytics to help better manage cost or see ROI using technology driven solutions? Yeah, I'll probably answer those both questions in one. OK, what I, what I would like to see and what I think it could be. Um, as a project manager, let's say in 20 years time, mm -hmm. if I walk into um, my office to a project, I would like to see a system where it tells me about the problems, mm -hmm. AI driven systems. So it can spot it for spot you. It and mm -hmm. also gives me suggestions. Yes. Like there is option one you can do, there's option two, option three, but because of option one, there are consequences because of this, 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 mm -hmm. because what happens we still make lots of decisions. Mm -hmm. um, they they not based on data. We make decisions, gut feelings, and experience mm -hmm. instead of driven by actually facts. Yes. In other industries, when you accountant or lawyer, you have things on facts. Yeah, you've yeah. got numbers. You feel yeah. okay. We've got we've earned this. We spend yes. that. Why is why is that happening? That's why I like engineering because it's just pure data, no emotions. Exactly, mm. and that's what I think. That's what missing in construction. We should be basing all our decisions on facts mm -hmm. and on data coming from it. But obviously the data can be overwhelming. We already have lots of data. Yeah, so it's, how to it's interpret happening. that? That's what where the AI comes into it. Mm -hmm. AI should summarize, should tell you of the problems, should tell you of potential s solutions and consequences of those solutions, because obviously things can have a knock effect. Mm -hmm. I need to remember my background construction management again. Yes. I look from the project management from how you run the project. That's why I said there, there's lots of other things. It's not easy, it's a tricky thing to do, mm -hmm. but that's what I would like to see. Probably one of the other thing is that to do that, obviously you will, if you make the right decision, mm -hmm. the rework, that means the cost will, it will be less. Yes. Because you don't have to go twice to things as well to to one room to do the skirting twice because someone left a couple meters there because they something else was going on mm -hmm. and they have to come back again and so on. Mm -hmm. They need to get paid for it. Mm -hmm. They got paid once. Now they're going to pay twice because mm -hmm. they came back again. Yeah, so that's very practical, like a solution that you're talking about. Yes, mm -hmm. and very like down to earth, I would say. Yeah, down to earth yeah. and the real examples. Yes, but what I also could see in like twenty years time, knowledge management. Mm. Okay. Where we have a database, the pool of information from all our projects, like every company's got all the information from all the previous project, you know, lesson learned, we all do them, but do we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> do we learn, do we look after previous mm -hmm. projects? We probably so busy with the new project, we never go back to the old ones and check what was happening. Some of, some of the stuff probably is being So you're talking about up. bioengineering and putting the chip in your head and <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't go as far as mm -hmm. I'm talking about about the database knowledge management, mm -hmm. where you have all the information from previous projects, mm -hmm. and obviously there's a massive amount of data where you can then, with AI element, you can ask a question: mm -hmm. What was the biggest issue on that project on a level that, or with which what trade with a MEP or joiner or drywall and all that, and gives you answer. Mm -hmm and it gives you answer with the um, a sentence. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that is missing. We don't have that at the moment because it's all about learning from previous projects. It's almost like when we start a new project in, I'm not talking about Canary Wharf now, but any construction project, we almost start from the beginning because I know the project are very unique, different very different, people. all different yeah. people, but then we, we never, oh, we never learned from last 50 buildings we did in, in, in last, few years you yeah. know we, we never and I think that's being lost mm -hmm. if we had that knowledge management the database we could probably learn yeah. some of it because in the end of the day right now it's just people right people come people go and all of this knowledge goes as well um, yeah. absolutely yes so. how people come to a project for two three years and they move on mm -hmm. it, it's it's uh, it's very you know um, uh, project based mm -hmm. okay so before we go into the a future and I will ask about AI and some other things. So I've got one question about a um, key piece of advice for people selling construction technologies.
present, find the gap first. If you have a system or want to develop a system or you have something, you need to find the niche, the gap. What are you trying to fix? Mm -hmm. That's probably crucial because if you create another system which there are already 10 systems on, on top of it, then it's going to be really hard to catch up with them and sell it. Mm -hmm. Find the gap, business value, what actually is going to give me. If, it's, if you're trying to sell me the same system I've got already, mm -hmm and it's nice and shiny you're trying to tell me and I will say uh, what actually will I get out of it if I implement your system will do exactly the same what I have now mm -hmm. why do you have to go through the pain points and go through the change of entire people entire system teach them and all that yeah. where's the what I'm getting I will end up in a year time with the same product mm -hmm. uh, and also the systems you implement something it's not for a project you, you know it goes for years we've got systems we've been using for as long as I remember mm -hmm and we develop them internally. Mm -hmm. Okay, brilliant. So that sounds like if there's some businesses that provide similar tech, that it's not the best way for founders to, to look into, like right? to copy and paste other solutions. But is there an area within construction, construction technology that you see there is a gap and there is opportunity, opportunity to innovate? Um, there would be, as I mentioned before briefly, that the, on the operational side, I think, mm -hmm. there is there's still... Um, a lot of, I would say, probably manual input there, mm -hmm. which we could automate or create a, a, you know, a s solution to make people um, less sitting by the desk and more being on site, doing mm -hmm. other things. Um, and also I mentioned the knowledge management. And probably the big thing as well we have, um, how are we trying to manage pro project when we sometimes don't know where people are, where the workforces are. Mm -hmm. I know it's a big thing. It's, it will take a long time to change our attitude towards it. But perhaps I've, I've looked into before, a few years ago, we tested a system where we track people on site. Mm -hmm. How did it work? Well, we had a test. As test in like you, you test when they walk? Like You test where you, you basically, they had an app. It was a few years ago and mm -hmm. you test where they're going and it's safety. Mm -hmm. You can use for productivity. Safety is an excuse to that. <laughs> you said it. I, I said I, it. I, I look at more. For me, it would be productivity. Yes. Uh, I would say, um, how can we control something where we don't know where what they are, how many of them, and mm -hmm. how actually what they are doing it. And out of this, you also can see if you have problem with a site setup. Mm -hmm. For example, why someone is queuing for a um, hoist for 20 minutes or half an hour. Yeah. If they go to the toilet twice and uh, and 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 they go for lunch and for a cup of tea, they probably half of the day they'll be there queuing for the. <laughs> yeah. And by the time they do some work, they've probably done three hours of work every day. Yeah, yeah. And that means you can see, oh, why is this happening? Our efficiency is so low because people mm -hmm. are there. Mm -hmm. That means you need maybe another host or maybe another. Yeah. strategy for that's for very you. interesting is there any tool that actually provides this kind of like um, productivity measure of, of employees on site uh, well you have to first track them yeah. track people on site to um, to get the data out mm -hmm. and see okay we've got 20 carpenters we've got um, three dry liners we've got so and so and and then obviously over a period of time you can see the trends you can see where they are, how many actually, how many hours they spend working in that room where they're supposed mm. to be working or why they're not working there. Are they supposed to, you know, we can go against program. You now you can see straight away differences. Yes. And then you you will see, oh, in average, that one dry liner was in, in a apartment, you know, mm. four hours a day, but he was on site for nine hours. Mm -hmm. That means what happened to the other five hours? Yeah. <laughs> God knows. Uh, Exactly, and mm -hmm. that's 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 sort of if you're trying to control something and measure it first, you need to track it. Yeah, yeah, you can't improve things if you can't measure it, them, yeah? or you don't store the, the data that you can compare. And uh, yeah, that's a and especially if you have multiple projects in on, on one side, let's say two, three buildings, and you've got the same trade contractors working on all of them. How do you know where they are once they enter the gate? Mm -hmm they clocked in they could be in building one building two building three mm -hmm. you don't know where they are if you know what i mean yeah unless yeah. unless you install gates on but again they go to a building you don't know where they're working what they're doing it's it's um i think it will take a time before we change our approach towards it and before we start thinking 
okay, should we go for it? Should we do one project? Um, I I know people are there already system in, systems in around there mm -hmm. doing something similar. What I've just described, we tested one a few years ago, um, and and it's it's um, it's not easy one. Yeah. But I think if you get it right, you definitely win. Mm -hmm. So on this point, actually, it, you just got me thinking that if you track someone, then wouldn't it be beneficial to know exactly? Um, so if someone comes to the site, they probably have a plan for a day, right? They they should have achieved certain outcome of uh, after this eight eight hours of, of work, right? So if if someone can um, digitize this workflow on site, that okay, person A has this and that to do to this day. Uh, that seems like a simple solution to make it all, all work, and and you can kind of get a nice data, right? If um, I would say it's more about um, see where people are at at any point, at any time. Mm -hmm. um, basically, give them, let's say, a, a, a card with a chip or, or some sort of um, a beacon or anything which they carry with mm -hmm. them, and see where they are, what they're doing. Because for actually, what they have to do is that probably to their supervisor to to, yes. to tell them today we're doing this this. But yeah. you, from a um, management perspective, you will look at and see. In that month, we had so many 20 dry liners every mm -hmm. day. And then they work on those floors. Mm -hmm. And then you can, okay, we had, and that's what we planned. You mm -hmm. can go and tra check this against what you have planned. Mm -hmm. How much they have they achieved? Mm -hmm. Have we overplanned or underplanned? Have yes. they given too much time or not enough time? Yeah. How many hours they spend? It's, it's, it's very, I would say, data-driven and yeah. number crunching a little bit, mm -hmm. but that's what the planners do anyway. Mm -hmm. You can then check and see, okay, how how productive they were, how many actually hours they spent there, mm -hmm. or what else was going on. Yeah, yeah, because if everyone has like their own scope of work for for the day, uh, and they when they clock in, they kind of start the work, and they when they finish the work, they kind of describe, okay, this was done, this was done, this was done, and it has a digital representation, then it would be a piece of a puzzle within the whole project that is achieved or not, or 90% yep. of today was achieved, mm -hmm. or 87. Okay, so now you can ask questions, why 87, not 99, yeah? <laughs> yep, you can you can check that and you can actually manage it. And then after a week, you've, you you see, or two weeks, things are slipping. Okay, what are we doing wrong? Yes, yes. Do we do we have a problem with the setup? Yeah. Do we need more people? Uh, is there a problem with materials? Yeah. Or, or Maybe management of the contractor. You can then straight away see and then you make changes to it yeah and because once you make changes you can see is it improving or not because mm -hmm. delays don't happen just in one day they happen day by day every accumulating yeah. it and then it's it's sort of it's a process it's a you know can take a week or weeks before you, you see things changing mm -hmm. brilliant roman any uh, um, hardware technologies that, that that you're looking at or you're seeing that are exciting because we touched on the workflow uh, and management, so kind of like software part of construction technology. Uh, there are people talking about like modular cons modular construction or um, robotics uh, and helping the the labor to well not replace them, re replace them slightly or um, improve their working conditions. Uh, people on site. Yeah? Uh, yes, in terms of the hardware, um, at the moment we're not actively looking at any sort mm. of robotics or we've seen it, you know, the Boston Dynamic robot with a scanner on top and... and um, Is it down more to the contractor to or, or, or what are your thoughts, generally speaking? Well, it's, it's probably, I would say, it's more to value. Mm -hmm. as well obviously it's a massive cost up front and mm -hmm. still you need to have someone to look after it mm -hmm. it's probably a good start that things are happening that way um, however at this stage I don't know if there is a big value in in uh, in sort of um, bringing a, a robot which is you know can cost a couple of hundred thousand pounds and and then you still have to have someone to operate it yeah uh, and you goes around and if you get stuck somewhere then you still have to go on that. There's, there's obviously, there's, a, I would say, a mission behind you to, to get that working. And then and then you will think, okay, we spend all that and 
it was probably cheaper and easier to get someone to send us a person. I said, it's a good start, but I, I haven't seen or haven't, I, I read news and I haven't actually done the, like someone who's got a, a robot mm -hmm. working actively. And um, there are some cases when people have, and you, you read the articles, but it's like one off. They've done a case study and they, oh, it's beautiful. It's fine. It works that, but would that, would you repeat that? Mm -hmm. You know, because I can put a lot of effort in, on, into one project, make make a success in terms of technology or, 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 or process or uh, hardware. Mm -hmm. But then can I can I use that next? Can I give it to you? Could you use it? Mm -hmm, probably. You, you'd be like, oh, OK, <laughs> you'd be lost. You know, you, yeah. you, you, you need that sort of make sure it can be repeated. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that probably will bring the efficiency and the and, and next step, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on to your PhD and AI. Uh, so can you give us a very brief overview of your PhD that you are undertaking uh, right now? Uh, so I think the, the, the thesis is critical examination of AI impact on the AEC industry productivity. Is that correct? It is, yes. Thank you. Um, I've started April last year. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing part-time at London South Bank University. Um, big research project. Um, and it's actually recently, two or three weeks ago, I had a big assessment mm -hmm. um, and uh, where I had to um, defend my idea, my subject in the front of a panel, mm -hmm. a panel of two professors and there were also uh, my two supervisors uh, there as well. Mm -hmm. And I had to do a presentation and defend it and, and, and so on. And it's actually uh, valuable, then in, I can go forward. Congratulations. Thank you. I had some good feedback, obviously constructive feedback. I need to change a few things, mm -hmm. think about something else. But also, the, probably the biggest things for me when I came out of it, it was that uh, the feedback I received that I'm in a very sort of unique position, mm -hmm. um, that I work in the industry. Uh, I'm actually doing it as well, and I'm doing research on the same thing. Yes. That I was, I was told that don't only think about PhD and a paper and put on the shelf. You, I have also that I have opportunity to actually do something more, mm -hmm. and perhaps with my find findings and with my PhD, influence the industry. Mm -hmm. And that was great to hear, mm -hmm. uh, because out of the my research, um, uh, the the final goal is to uh, create a framework. What framework? That's a fancy word again. Uh, mm -hmm. It sounds really fun. Uh, you know, um, it sounds very clever. Um, it's basically after I do my research, I find my findings and I will um, create a framework like su suggestions of process flow. Mm -hmm. um, if I, when I research different systems, what they do and so on, how they should be used, how we need to implement to get the best out of them. Because mm -hmm. in the end, um, it's all about, I would say, people, processes, technology. People, processes, technology. It's technology. Is the it's just a system is just a tool. Yes. It's all about us and the process of how we do things. Mm -hmm. And we always need to look that way first. If we're implementing technology, we need to take into account massively people, mm -hmm. and also the way we work. We need to change the way we work to make sure the system. Uh, we get the best out of it. So slightly si side question on this. Do you think that technology needs to be, like sub should be simple or should not, not necessarily be simple? Because if we need to, if we have technology and we need to have consultants who will help implement this technology, that sounds like not scalable technology, right? Because y it's very probably, yeah, it's not scalable already, right? If you need a consultant to implement it every time, so. Simplicity is the key. Yeah. Because if you make it complicated, that means the user side of it will be complicated as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in my experience, I always say, let's keep it simple. Mm -hmm. um, and and the, 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 the focus is actually on the people. And then if we implement the technology, the say we've got projects, the AI, automations, everything else, is it actually productivity increasing? Yeah. That's a, good, that's a good that's question. That's the big question for me as well. I want to I want to check that. Yeah. Uh, because we might be implementing fancy systems doing all the stuff, but still uh, we're doing things as we were doing it. Mm -hmm. 
that's why I said we need to change the way we work when we implement a system. Mm -hmm. We need to think, we need to change our attitude towards, okay, this can do that, but I need to do this slightly different and this will help me to achieve that. Mm -hmm. And because of that, and now I, I've, I, I just have to do half of it because the system does half of it, but I still have to do something. Yes. So if, if when we say, when someone says AI in construction, then, so what, what are we seeing? Where we are with, with in construction within uh, large uh, L, help me. Large language models. Large language models <laughs> and uh, artificial technology. Um, Maybe uh, if you can reference other industries, I like, or compare somehow. Well, it's within the um, construction, the AI and automation, it's um, relatively new. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, okay, there there were cases uh, a long time ago, but there were individual cases. But in the last, I would say, three to five years, things started picking up, and then we have more systems and more implementation, more people are using it. Um, and I think there's still very early stage to, to actually analyze it. You need to have a little bit longer, more data, mm -hmm. longer time of people using it to actually be able to say, oh, this works, this doesn't work. That's why I need to be cautious with my research because my research is based on interviews mm -hmm. with tech companies and construction companies, different mm -hmm. construction companies. And, and then I'll be uh, checking and asking them what systems do you use? Do they have AI elements? Okay, what the benefits? What stuff can you describe? R return on investment, if, if there are any, or if not that, the cases and all that. And it's very, I would say, it's still early stage. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think you can already see the sign of it. Um, because if it's someone that has been using AI system or with system with AI elements in it for the last three to five years, mm -hmm. I'm sure they've got already their sort of um, opinion about this, uh, and it it, w it will be subjective s sometimes. Depends of who's using it, you know, probably the background, the age of all that. But it, it, you would get a picture out of it. Okay. So uh, broad question now. So uh, how do we currently measure productivity in construction, and like what is your th thesis that uh, AI will impact the productivity in in what way? Um, we touched on it a little bit it's, earlier. It's, well, the major productivity, it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing subject and discussion within the construction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, how AI will measure productivity, I would say, will probably help us to be more productive, will provide us the data to be more productive. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. We'll optimize the manual task or the manual, the repetit no, manual, repetitive task we're doing already. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what will help us with, and this will help us. This will make us more productive. Mm -hmm. That's my view on it. Yes. And I will be on the uh, software side. Software side, absolutely. Yes, this I'm yeah. talking only about the software, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we had a similar question slightly earlier, uh, but um, you probably sp spent quite a lot of time thinking about AI future construction as well. So in 20 years, um, how do you think construction will be, it's impossible to answer it <laughs> in a way, in 20 years, what do you think construction will look like uh, after having this impact of AI and large language models? Yes, we had a similar question. I would say the probably the biggest thing for me as um, coming from the construction management background is to make informative decisions mm -hmm. based on the data and suggestions and the consequences of those suggestions. Mm -hmm. For example, things happen and the suggestion one, two, three, four. If I take one, consequences is A, B, or C. If I do two, consequences are that. And then you as a project manager will mm -hmm. make the choice based on the data, not mm -hmm. on your gut feeling, mm -hmm. but based on the information you have been provided mm -hmm. because it's been collected, lots of data from the project, mm -hmm. been analyzed by AI, and it gives you that sort of summary. Mm -hmm. Very pragmatic, very pragmatic answer. I, I was expecting you to say that building, buildings will be printed in the air. Oh, the it's <laughs> it, you know what? I work on things that work. Yeah. You know what? I don't, I don't dream. Uh, I, I don't dream. <laughs> I don't. I've got my own dreams, but I don't put my head in the clouds. <laughs> I'm yeah. very um, practical. Yeah. It needs to work. That when it comes to the systems, well, it needs to work. I, and then my first question is, what's the business value? What do I get out of it? Otherwise, 
what's the point of doing it mm -hmm. and 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 on on that basis that's that's of my approach mm -hmm. towards technology okay so uh, one more question from our LinkedIn poll. Uh, Jamie Dalton asks, how do you predict AI will affect the construction workforce? I think I've answered that already from the, all of them. Jamie, Jamie, Jamie. Um, I would say it's the um, the workforce. Repetitive tasks. Mm -hmm. It will disappear. It will be done by AI. Whatever we're doing now, in terms of, uh, let's say, side diaries, in terms of some reports, mm -hmm. this will be done by AI. We already have some of the elements of it. it needs to get better. Mm -hmm. We already have elements of, of that. It is happening. Then, and I'm also mentioned about the decision making. That's so, the, that's the two two big things probably for me. It will change. It will also safety, behavior of people, mm -hmm. uh, where they are, what they should be doing, and 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 um, yeah. That, that will definitely improve um, on on a construction project, and this will lead to better product quality mm -hmm. of uh, what is being built, mm -hmm. and we'll have more sustainable infrastructure. Does it mean less people working on uh, in the construction industry? Uh, it's just more automated, or people just doing different things? I would say d d different things. People will retrain. Mm -hmm. People will, re will retrain, they will do other things, they will spend more time on doing the valuable stuff, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. You, you're sitting, let's say, sitting, spending a couple hours every day doing some paperwork mm -hmm. on the computer. If you could do that in 20 minutes because of AI will help you, mm -hmm. but you can spend that other time being on site uh, and, and then improving the product uh, and then spotting the safety issues and so on. Basically, mm -hmm. you put your attention on something that's more valuable, actually the building, the product, instead of clicking it and filling up forms. Okay, so the closing question on this subject, uh, what was the thing that you didn't expect to find out or learn about when you embarked on the journey of, of PhD in, in AI and productivity? The amount of thinking you have to do. Mm -hmm. It can be painful sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> the because um, PhD, it's it's not just you you go and write stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to think uh, critically, examine, and you're being challenged mm -hmm. for the right reasons. Um, because obviously, the, if someone challenges you, you think about other stuff. Mm -hmm. From my own perspective, I'm definitely because of uh, working in the industry. I would say I'm subjective. I, that, that's Everyone why, is really. Yeah. That's why I said before, going to university will open your mind. Mm -hmm. Because if you working you in that little silo, if you go to university, and I'm myself the same, subjective, you go to university, they will force you to think about other stuff. Mm -hmm. Because you have to um, read a lot of reading as well. Reading and thinking, and that will open your mind to other things. Mm -hmm. What is uh, your way of refining your thinking or like clearing your thoughts to get to better ideas, outcomes? Um, how is your, what, how you are best productive with your thinking? Having a break and go for a walk mm. and come back to the same task. But when you go for a walk, you forget about it. Mm -hmm. Try to forget about it. And then when you come back to a task, to difficult task, could be work or PhD, and you I try to approach from completely new perspective mm -hmm. because maybe the old perspective I was going the wrong way around. Mm -hmm. Then I start looking for new one and then I think, okay, then that helps you because obviously if you drill the old one, you may be going from the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And then if you clear your mind and start again, it's like, you know, fresh start. Exactly. A fresh idea, fresh sort of thinking. Yes. All right, we'll be going towards our uh, off-topic questions. So, Will uh, Senot from Disperse ask, uh, how do you combine, I think I'm rephrasing this question, I don't have it written, but I remember he asked about how do you combine, uh, combine all of three, which is your uh, personal life, uh, PhD, and construction, technology, productivity, AI, everything else? I can't tell Will the answer, you know, he, <laughs> he wants to know everything. Um, 
it's setting up priority. I'm, it's, you know what, I'm not inventing anything new. I'm not reinventing the wheel. Setting up priorities. Mm -hmm. what's, what's, the, what's for you the most important? Obviously work, sorry, family is first. Mm -hmm. Work and then PhD. Mm -hmm. And then you set those priorities first and then you work around them. Work around that also. Mm -hmm. um, I would say there's so many distractions we have unnecessary. Mm. You know, uh, let's for example, I, I barely watch TV mm -hmm. because I, I think it's a big waste of time. But by the time if you watch TV every day for one hour, if I read something or was writing something for one hour, you you become a master of something yes. in a few uh, months. Few months, yeah. And then you set priorities. So I think that's very important. Um, you and you need to work on it. Work on it hard. Be consistent. Um, the consistency is someone called me uh, once relentless. Consistency is relentless. Th that I'm being relentless. Oh, okay. That means if you really want something, mm -hmm. you have to be relentless. You're relentless. You don't yeah, let it go. Yes. If if you if you like semi serious semi about it, yeah. you 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 mm. you will let it go. But yeah. if you really want something, you actually you will ask today. Mm. You'll ask in next two days. You will ask next week. You mm. will not let it go. Mm -hmm. Um, and then being a taskmaster, mm. you, if you say you do something, do it. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tool that you use? I don't know, ClickUp or any some notes or no? I, I do take a lot of notes myself, mm -hmm. and I digitally even or on paper. Digital. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Martin. <laughs> how could you? <laughs> I don't have a pen. Let's start there. Okay. I write everything <laughs> on the iPad or or, or the five iPhone. Mm -hmm. Taskmaster basically, uh, if you say do something mm -hmm. and follow through mm -hmm. uh, and and basically get to the bottom of it, um, and then it, it will help you to with work as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and and the biggest thing which I would say from the university which I've learned, and I had that question on interview once uh, when I was doing my master's, someone asked me, "What did you learn from the universities?" Because uh, obviously, this, this that was my next question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was it? No, <laughs> they, what, what did you learn? Because you've done all this, uh, you've always been doing study, mm -hmm. and that was, and I was like, Gosmak, I'm thinking, okay, do you remember? You do remember stuff from university, but what do you learn? You learn how to learn. Yeah, and that's what you do at work as well. But if mm. you master that, you, um, when I do research on PhD. I have to read sometimes read quickly yeah, and find learning. and find the best thing out of it. I want to um, use it for my PhD or I think that's a good idea that that's that's relevant. That's that's a good case study. Mm -hmm. You learn quickly how to learn because you don't have time to read books and papers and all that. If you start reading it, your PhD will take you 20 years, you know, mm -hmm. and you have to be efficient in terms of you learn how to learn and you adapt that not just for PhD or for any study but also for work because mm -hmm. it's almost the same. You at work when you've got task. Okay, how do I get from A to B? I have to quickly learn this, talk to some people and make a decision and okay, closed. Mm -hmm. But that also, that also comes from project management, the, the construction project management. You want to get from A to B the shortest way mm -hmm. and the quickest. Mm -hmm. You don't want to stop halfway through, you know, yeah. and then think, oh no, you want to get there and think, close the task. That's very important. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think people people lose the edge in life when they stop learning and just go with autopilot, keeping like the same uh, song in their head all the time. Doing. Yes, that that's that's the thing. Yeah, it's. Mm -hmm. it, I think uh, that's why it's um, working and learning. Uh, looking back now at my university teachers and even now, um, one of the best I ever had. It were actually who were either came from work and went to university as teachers or were working part-time, part-time because they could relate to real life examples yeah. instead of uh, didn't have time for unnecessary things because and they were working as well. Exactly. Yeah. And plus they, they're not going to teach you something which has been done 20 years ago because mm -hmm. they read the book and they based purely on theory, which, you know, I, I love th theory as well. It's good to read and it's good. It, it opens your mind. But at the same time, you have to clash the theory with um, practical things. And that's another challenge for my uh, PhD. And someone mentioned that to me. 
it must have been Will as well from the Spurs. He oh. said to me, "You're talking about him too much." He did. Um, I think it was him. He he said that my um, there will be a clash theory with my practical experience because, and I experienced that already. Mm -hmm. Not everything theory I would agree with because I know I'm subjective already. I know different, yes. and I think I know better because yeah. I'm already working in it and I know the industry mm. and from from what I read on being taught, thinking like. I start questioning it. Is that right? No, I'm, I'm, I know other way. I actually, I know this is this is right. And the question is, what is right? What you think because you're biased, or you should step back and look from broader point of view. That's why. That's why the university opens your mind a yeah. little bit. You 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 become less subjective yes. and and thinking from your own selfish perspective because that's what we do. All right, I'm gonna sign up to some course then. <laughs> after this, <laughs> if you want a one-to-one -one, um, session of uh, time management, come to me. Sure. And I'll, I'll love sure, I'll bring my note, uh, note notes. Bring your notes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't you don't need any tools to do time management. It's all there in the head. In the head. If you if you remove your apps from the phone and stop watching Netflix all the time, you oh, find time you that's find it. time for everything, for okay. everything you want to do. That's that's coming for me. Yeah. All right, Roman. Uh, thank you very much. Mm, we'll be wrapping this up. Um, where can people find more about you and Canary Wolf Group? Um, about, let's start with Canary Wolf Group. Mm -hmm. If you Google it, there's Canary Wolf, Canary Wolf Group website. We also have Level 39, the Innovation Center, mm -hmm. the hub. Um, there's all information there. There's also Canary Wolf app. You can download uh, and then you can see the latest what's going on in Canary Wharf, the news, promotions, um, and you, you know where are the cafes, where are the restaurants, uh, where are the shops. You can find that through the app. Probably, I would say app would be the best. Everyone is now on the phone when you're on the train somewhere, do the app. Um, about me, uh, LinkedIn. Okay. I, I'm not on any other social, that's another thing. I'm only on LinkedIn because purely for professional Gone, purposes. Not your time. Trying not to. Let's yeah. put that. procrastination is the biggest killer as well. Yeah. But yes, it's the um, yeah on, on me on uh, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I'm there not all the time, but occasionally. Okay, Roman, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank it was you. a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.